everyone. So I hope everyone's having a fantastic month. It seems like August is just already flying by so, so quickly. And hence why I kind of wanted to make this video before it ends. Uh, yeah, August is actually SJS Awareness Month. For those of you who don't know what SJS is, just stay tuned and I will explain. Um, yeah, so I was very, very sick back in January and I feel like I could probably go on for hours about this video, but I don't want to make it a five, four hour, whatever video. So I kind of thought the easiest way I would do this video is kind of like a Q&A. I get a ton of questions about what SJS is, how I got it, and just, it's such a rare thing. And I was actually supposed to go um, and have an interview with CTV in Edmonton for the news, but due to COVID and all that, it just got kind of put on a back burner for now. I don't really want to make this video strictly about, you know, me, or poor me, whatever. I got sick. I almost died. You know, it's not um, who I am. I kind of wanted to, you know, make it. It is good to share my story because if I, I feel like if I don't share it, I could be preventing, you know, potentially maybe saving someone else's life. And if I could just, you know, have my story out there and just save one life, heck, I'd be, I'd feel really good that I actually decided to speak out about what I had and stuff. So, hope you guys like this. Bear with me. I am not used to making videos like this at all without like some kind of like script or whatever. So, just bear with me. So, first question I get all the time is what is SGS? Um, best way I can explain it, SGS is short for Steven Johnson Syndrome. The best way I can put it into words without reading off the internet or Google or whatever is it is a, a severe allergic reaction to a medication and it basically flares up all over your skin and peels, blisters, and burns your skin and your body kind of from the inside out. So yeah, it's, it is not something to be taken lightly and honestly it kind of shocks me how many doctors don't know about it or how many people don't know about it because it is extremely rare but it is deadly and it is something that people should know about especially those who are on medication. Second question I get all the time too is how did I get it? It's a very complicated question, but it's actually not when you think about it. I got it because I was over medicated. It was a se SJS is a severe drug reaction, allergic reaction, whatever. Like it's just, and yeah, I got over medicated big time. I was on between mid to late November to December, probably over, I want to say like 12 different medications. And we're not talking about like, you know, just your generics like Advil, Tylenol, whatever, Gravel, Benadryl, any of those. We're talking about like heavy duty drugs. Um, yeah, and I got over medicated. I was on way, way too many than I should have. And that's how I got the reaction. I will actually um, show a clip right now of all the drugs that I was on. All right, to give you guys some perspective here, these were all of the meds that I was on in a time from a month and a half. So I did empty all the pill bottles to show you guys just how much actually I was taking. I just take out the so-called safe ones like Advil, um, Tylenol, take those ones out. These are all very, very serious, hardcore drugs. These three were the cyclosporin. These two are lithium, which you do not mess with. And the majority of these ones are actually all tranquilizers. Yeah, so this little guy, this little guy, these three, 
And this one were all tranquilizers, so it wants to so-called help me sleep during all the pain I was going through, which I'm sure did not help anything because I never, they never helped me sleep. They didn't make me get like tired or anything. And then these little guys, little, the Motrogen, these ones are the ones that were the lead causing up to my Steven Johnson's. These ones were, are the most deathly probably out of this whole plate of pills. So this is the box for the Cyclosporin. As you can see, it does say immunosuppressive agent. So every time I took a pill or a dose or whatever, it was just working even harder to kill my immune system every single time. Of course, that didn't help anything, you know, especially getting a global pandemic two months later. This was the Cyclosporin I got at uh, while I was at home. The colors are different that I had in the hospital, but yeah, they were so, so disgusting and they literally smell like skunk. So, so gross. And they're just huge, like, and I had to take so many of them twice a day. I think I was up to like six pills twice a day. You know, it just, it helped, but it was, yeah, not a fun time. <laughs> I also want to show you guys my scarring that is left from the Steven Johnson's. Uh, you can't really see it, you know, in certain lighting, but under this lighting in my kitchen, you definitely can see it. So it's kind of hard to tell right now, but like it, there's little dots on my hand that you can see that scarring was left from. And it's kind of, yeah, it's in between my fingers as well. Yeah, right there, you can see quite a bit of it. My hands are the only visible place I can see the scarring from the Steven Johnson's. Uh, yeah, there was a lot on my hands in the beginning, so I think that's probably why you can see the scarring worst on them. But my back does have some as well, you just, and it's so weird because my back was the worst and you can't see it as much than on my hands. It's just very, very weird. How did they diagnose you? Um, <laughs> it's funny, almost with every single question, there isn't really an easy answer because of how complicated this all was and how much I kind of have blocked out mentally because of just of how bad of an experience it was. So they, it took a ridiculous amount of time to actually diagnose me. I think that's why I had gotten to the state I was, because if they had caught me in time, diagnosed me earlier, it wouldn't have gotten as bad. So they diagnosed me by seeing some of my symptoms, obviously. Um, the two main ways they did was, um, a biopsy on my right leg and then on my left leg of the rash that I had and then I also went to see a dermatologist and they had stuck down this big camera scope thing down my throat and that is actually when they for sure knew that it was Steven Johnson syndrome. Uh, how did they treat it? They treated it with a drug called cyclosporin is very similar kind of acts in the same kind of way chemo would to you so it is a uh, immunosuppressant and that's what they used i was on that for about a month to get rid of it and um, hospitalization is required for getting rid of stephen johnson syndrome they need to monitor you constantly and just to make sure that that rash is going down and it's not getting worse and they have to make sure that it's not affecting any other areas of your body because Steven Johnson syndrome likes to affect not only your skin, but three of your mucous membranes. So for me, I had to be on eye drops all the time. I was every hour taking eye drops. Um, I only got it in my eyes, barely, but they were just kind of making sure of. The main part I got it for my mucous membranes is in my mouth. That is where it was the worst. That is where it hurt the most. Um, that is what was closing up. So they had to constantly monitor me and yeah, get this drug to kill my immune system and 
yeah, it just did its thing and it, it worked. Thank goodness. The question is how long did it last? This is something a lot of people ask me as well is how long was in the hospital? Um, am I clear of it? Like that kind of stuff. I was in the hospital from like the 11th to 22nd of January. So that's about two weeks, 12 days, whatever. Um, but technically I would say it did last uh, probably close to a month and a half because I was very, very deathly sick with all the symptoms in December. So, and then for us to actually find out what was causing it because I just thought I had a cold. I thought I had a horrible cold, the worst cold I've ever had in my life. But yeah, then the rash showed up and that's when I knew it wasn't just a cold. So yeah, I'd say it lasted a good month and a half for sure. My symptoms? Um, my symptoms, like I said, I had a very, very bad cold. I was, I had headaches, I had a fever that would not go away, and um, it was, I developed a horrible cough. Like, actually looking back, if I didn't have the rash and everything, I could have sworn I had COVID because of just how horrible the cough was and how much it was affecting my breathing and everything so and for those of you who know me know I love my food but I didn't eat for like a week and the only thing I could get down was like a thing of boost like that energy like that drink thing and make like just drink that every now and then or like ginger ale or just something but I couldn't get anything else in and so yeah, I would say my symptoms were very similar to a very, very bad cold. However, um, they were just amplified. Like I had to sleep at night on the couch with like five pillows up just for my head to be up and help my airways because I was, I, my breathing was just, it was horrible. It was awful. And like I said, I had a really high fever that would not go away. Well, the rash is a major symptom of Steven Johnson syndrome. So I was so sick and it was getting to the point where things were starting to kind of swell. Like I noticed one morning that my mouth was kind of swollen and um, then my mom and I were out at London Drugs waiting for a prescription of mine. And so we were looking and it was just different lighting than what we were used to and like looking in the this one aisle thanks for the, yeah thanks for the fluorescent lighting and um looking at my hands and i just had all these little dots all over i'm like okay this is this is very very weird so that is a major symptom and you know it's honestly could be a lifesaver because i'm telling you right now if you're taking some kind of new medication that you're not used to and you get a rash and you're sick and you have cold flu like symptoms stop taking it go to the er and get checked out or whatever i don't care stop taking it that is what the one pharmacist told me and she's because we were going to refill this prescription that was actually the main cause of stephen johnson's and uh she told me to go to the er she's like you have a rash go to the er because they knew they knew that Next question is, how long did it take for me to recover from? So, this is a tough one because I still feel like I fully haven't recovered from it. I have long-term side effects, but in the beginning, initial stages of when I was hit the worst, I'd say it took me about three to four months to get some strength back. Um, I wasn't walking in the hospital. Um, my mom took me for a walk one day, but other than that, I was so, so tired. I was so weak. I was just so sick and I couldn't, I had no strength. So the first couple days after getting released from the hospital, were probably the toughest because I had to walk. 
um, I had to, like, I couldn't barely get up the stairs to get into our house at the time, and it was just really, really horrible. Like, I couldn't walk from the hospital to the car. Like, I just, I struggled so, so much. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even think to get a wheelchair or anything because I didn't really need one, but, like, it was, yeah, not a fun time. So, yeah, the initial stages of the recovery time for me from getting released to being at home and everything, yeah, I'd say, like, three months of actually just building up my strength going for walks doing what I could thankfully my little nephew was um born and everything around that same time everything was going on so he'd come to our place we'd go for walks I'd push him in the stroller and that really just helped me having that just that support to walk him and everything and I got to build up my strength gradually and it's it's been a very long annoying process because of getting so so weak like you go from being on your deathbed to like having to recover and it wasn't just all in like it wasn't just a mental game it was very very much physical and getting my strength back and just different things here and there and just the <laughs> levels of fatigue I've had and had to work on and yeah so it hasn't <sighs> how long the recovery has been is still up until now like seven months later because you don't just go from dying to healing just like that it's an everyday struggle every single day I have to work on you know trying to improve my health to eat better to actually exercise to get enough sleep just everything everything everyone should be doing anyways but I feel like for me I was just the fight to do all that is 10 times harder just because of how tired I am on a daily basis. And um, one thing too, I have definitely noticed is um, when I do go for walks or I'm standing on my feet for a long period of time, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's cement, carpet, doesn't matter what kind of surface it, it is that I'm standing on. I have to sit after like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. I used to work full time, be on my feet all day, and now it's, it is, you know, it's just very, very exhausting having those limits now, and my feet are damaged, like the nerves are damaged because of what I had. All right, another one people do ask me is how, how did I cope? How did I get through all of that? Um, you know... There is no perfect way to cope. Everyone has their own different ways and strategies. Um, I think the hardest part for me was being very independent and having my crap together and then going from being, you know, taken down by my health to the point of being a dependent again and you know living situations and all that has been tough um because like it's it's so much easier when you are living by yourself you know and you've moved out you've done everything that a normal young person should do in their life and then something knocks you down and hard and then you have to you know go back to living at home or whatever and it's just that's been a challenge because you know, haven't even, like, my doctors don't want me working yet and everything, so that's been very, very frustrating. Um, but I did cope. I coped. Um, I have an amazing, amazing family. Um, my mom has helped me immensely from the start. Very, very supportive. I have a very great support system, and... You know, I had the same day I was released from the hospital, my nephew was um, born. So that, and he got to go home. That was a very, very beautiful day. And uh, having him in my life has really, really helped. He's just this little perfect 
little creature and I look at him and I just love him so much and he helps me and he makes me laugh and yeah and I you just get through it you honestly just get through it but like me mentally if you're wanting to know how I did like coped with it all I just you know tried to have a lot of patience with myself and remind myself that you know you can get through something like this and I can help someone else and you just go with it you go life gives you all these waves and you just you just gotta ride them as SJS permanent the flare-up that you will have sorry for my dog <laughs> the flare-up that you could have or will have um, with SJS is not permanent um, you know obviously if treated right right meds quick enough treatment um, it's not gonna last your whole life it's not so you're not gonna have this flare-up and be in the hospital for years or whatever however once you have it the chances of getting it again are very very high so it's not permanent but you just you gotta be so careful with so many people ask me this it's not even funny what medications can i take that are safe afterwards after getting this like you're you had this horrible allergic reaction to a med people want to know what the heck they can take afterwards like seriously um that is a really, really, really tough question because there are over 600 to 700 different meds that can cause this again. I can't even take Advil because of the chances of a flare up. So it's honestly, I don't really think anyone who's had this is actually ever safe fully again. You know, anything that I take like, like a um, Benadryl or gravel, Tylenol kind of are the only ones I can take right now that I have noticed that you know nothing's happened. Um, they are proclaimed to be safe, but I was doing more and more research about stuff like this because obviously you want to know so this doesn't happen again. And even all of those ones that I just mentioned that I have taken can cause it. So you're not really, really safe with. Um, it's yeah there's no guarantee that it can't come back or another medication can't trigger it because yeah like i said something as simple as an advil can trigger this again so it's just a really really frustrating thing especially because if you get a headache or anything like that or i'm nauseous or i have an allergic reaction to something um you want to take all those meds that you can get but you're not guaranteed that you can't get something that's not gonna come back and possibly kill you again. So, all right, next question that a lot of people ask um, are what are the long-term effects? What are the long-term side effects of your body that happen afterwards of getting SJS? I had to write these ones down because I couldn't remember them all. So, the first one is pigmentation, dryness of skin, excess sweating, hair loss, impaired taste, inflammation of the eyes that could lead to vision impairments. And honestly, yeah, all of these are extremely, extremely awful. Um, I know lots of people that can have problems, organ damage or whatever, because lots of people don't realize that, yes, just because this rash is on your skin, um, lots of people just kind of think of it as a rash, kind of whatever, but they don't realize the severity of it. The rash starts off mild, turns extreme. If you don't catch it in time, you will end up in the burn unit and you have a very, very high chance of dying. And you're not just gonna, you know, suffer from the rash itself. Honestly, my rash, yes, it looked disgusting and horrible, but it honestly wasn't the worst one that I have had. Um, it wasn't crazy itchy or anything yet. Maybe that's just because they caught it in time. I think the thing I had the most trouble with was my mouth because it was in my mouth, it was swelling up, it was closing up my throat and my airways and that is the night that I almost died because it was 
it wasn't just all on, on the outside. It wasn't even that bad compared to like a lot of people that do get it. You know, I see tons of people, pictures or whatever, um, of people and they are in, you know, little body casts in a burn unit. And you know, this can affect, doesn't matter the age or race or anything. Like little kids get this, young adults get this, older people get it, it doesn't matter. It is just a very, very severe, severe drug reaction, allergic reaction. So, um, anyways, getting back to what was going on with me, um, my mouth, I, the night that I got admitted to the hospital, we had to go from the hospital across town to get to the dermatologist's office in time. So, and yeah, it was like minus 40 out. Um, I could not could not breathe in the air without feeling like I was swallowing glass. Um, I literally walked around with my hand covered over my mouth the whole time running in and out of the car. It was just horrible. So that's when I was seen. We got back to the hospital. I don't like to be dramatic or anything, but I was losing time. Um, they had to figure out something quick. I was in the waiting room with my parents and all I could hear was the doctors arguing over what it is, how it would it treat me. They were freaking out, we were freaking out, and yet I was as calm as ever. Like, I honestly just remember, you know, laying on my mom's lap and just, like, trying to say my goodbyes. I'm like, mm -mm, this is it, like, and it's just such a bizarre and weird thing to even think about again because I blocked out so much from that night so much I can't even even begin to comprehend or remember because of just how horrible it was it was the rash wasn't gonna kill me on the outside but it was from the inside because it was all in my throats so it's just it's not something that you want to mess around with and it's something that you want to catch in time so so incredibly grateful not only to my family, but my this amazing doctor I had on my case, he was honestly just incredible. Like, if he hadn't taken an interest and was curious in what I had and what was going on, I don't think I honestly would have been here today telling you my story because he was just amazing. He looked after me and got to the bottom of it. And you know, when push came to shove and we were literally running out of time with what to figure out with me and he decided what to do and we did it and just, yeah I am I'm very 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 grateful for him. Thank you guys so so much for listening to my rambling about this. Um, I really hope it can help educate people and you know maybe save someone else's life one day. Kind of making, making Steven Johnson syndrome more um, out there and making people more aware of it including doctors and everything because you know it it's so so like concerning when you're in the hospital and all the nurses are talking to you and you know you have pharmacists coming to see you everyone i felt like a celebrity in that hospital but for like all the wrong reasons because nobody knows what this is and you know they do it in the textbook or whatever and most doctors don't even live to see a case in their day. So, you know, making people aware of it because it could happen, it could happen to anyone. You know, and as rare as it is, it still does happen and people still do, do die from it. So, anyways, thank you guys so, so much for listening. And if you guys have any, like, questions or want to ask me anything about this, just feel free to comment or message me or anything so thank you guys so so much